All right, all right, your next comedian, we're uh, glad to have him here at the Bull & Bush. Uh, drop in from New York, put your hands together. Mike Gild, everybody, Mike Gild is here. Thank you so much, Bull & Bush. Give it up for yourself. Fantastic. What a fun night. I like to, I like to try to, you know, get really in touch with my audience. I like to, I want you guys to trust me as much as I'm going to trust you for the next couple minutes, right? So here's how I do it. Here's how I get you to trust me. I get you to be on my side. I'm going to tell you a little secret about comedy, a little behind the scenes action about comedy. Make some noise real quick if you are not a comedian. Okay. Right. It's good. It's a lot of people. It's great. I'm used to performing for 60 comedians. <laughs> Here's a little behind the scenes about comedy. Do you, any of you guys know what comedians call non-comedians? We call you guys civilians. Do you know why? Because we have no respect for the military. We're terrible people. We're awful people. All of us. I'm from a military family. Uh, lots of family members in the military. Uh, and I've, I've noticed that, I don't know if it's because of that or in spite of that, but I am addicted to stolen Valor videos on YouTube. <laughs> Do you guys know what this is? This is like people pretending to be in the military to get, I don't know, to get a discount at Dairy Queen or something. I really don't know what it is you can get. You can't walk into a car dealership and be like, I was in the military. And they're like, two cars, two cars for you. Thank you for your service. Two brand new cars, just for you. I watch a lot of Stolen Valor videos. Uh, they're hilarious to me, I can't help it. They're so fucking funny. I've noticed a trend though in Stolen Valor videos that uh, they only take place in two locations. Apparently Valor can only be stolen in two different places in the world and that is at the mall and in a Walmart parking lot. It's literally the only two places that Valor can be stolen. <laughs> I, uh, it's good to be in Florida. I'm originally from Florida. I've been up in New York for a long time, but it's really good to be back, guys. I'm enjoying my stay down here. I really love it. And it's great. It's great being back because you know, doing comedy, I get to travel around quite a bit, and like, I've been to I've been to the worst place on the planet. I'm 100 percent sure of this, and I'm sure we all know what the worst place on the planet is. Go ahead, say it with me. Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> pop quiz, I feel like. It's very easy. Here's, what I, here's the thing that fucking pisses me off the most about Boston, Massachusetts, is not only are they racist, but they're so proud of how racist they are. They're so open about it. Like, they don't give a shit who knows that they're racist. In the South, we hide it. Like, respectable people. So when you try, like, here's, this is a perfect example of just how proud Boston is to be racist. When you drive into Boston, when you drive in, there's a giant sign right when you walk in. It says, Welcome to Boston, the city that never sleeps with anyone outside the road race. <laughs> oh God damn! I don't give a shit. <laughs> Last time I was in Boston, I overheard, I was at a bar and stuff, and I heard this guy talking to a buddy and he was, he, was, he was basically going off about how, he was a white guy and he was saying how he thinks he should be able to say the n-word. He's like, it's not, I know it's offensive, but I, it's not that I want to offend anybody. It's more along the lines of I just think it's unfair that black people have something to say that white people can't say ever. I think that's unfair. I'm like, why? That, I had to interrupt this guy. I was like, I, here, there's literally millions of things white people can say that black people or anyone else can't. Oh, no, thank you. I'm just looking. <laughs> I'm, from, I'm from Tampa. Originally, I was where I was born. And, uh, raised. Shout out, Tampa. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of people here who experienced Tampa before. Uh, if you're from there, you might uh, know exactly what I'm about to say. Uh, since I'm from Tampa, I have a lot of really dumb friends. <laughs> Just people that you're like, 
<laughs> you know, you see at the ten-year high school reunion, and you're like, you're still alive? Jesus! <laughs> Good God! My favorite story about one of my dumb friends is tape, especially. So we're sitting there, we're just watching TV, right? Like we can't, Floridians, we can't even watch TV safely. Uh, we're watching TV, and one of those commercials comes on for like the bleach white strips for your teeth, right? And it was like at the end of the commercial, it was like order yours now for eighty nine ninety nine. My buddy just looked back at me and he was just like, I could bleach my teeth way cheaper than that. <laughs> I just, I just was gonna ignore it and like hope it went away. Uh, but he did not, he did not forget about this. In fact, the next day he went out to his local Walmart and he bought himself a brand new toothbrush and a brand new bottle of bleach, uh, normal kitchen bleach. Uh, and then he went home and he poured bleach all over a toothbrush and just scrubbed his teeth, just over and over again, just scrubbing his teeth with bleach. And I know it sounds unbelievable, guys. I'm agreeing with you that it sounds not real. But he really did have the whitest teeth I have ever seen. The whitest teeth I have ever seen on a corpse. Ever. The funeral director agreed. He was like, I don't know what you kids are doing. But it's working. For me. <laughs> like dead bodies. That's what I love. I, uh, I used to have sex, and now I'm married. <laughs> uh, I used to have sex with people, and now I'm married to a person. Uh, but when I, you know, when I was single and stuff, when I was younger, I tried to be safe. I tried to, uh, you know, protect myself, and I was going to be responsible. But I always end up being responsible in the least responsible way, somehow. I, bought, I would buy condoms, and I would use condoms, but I would buy dollar store condoms. <laughs> and like, the gimmick of dollar store condoms isn't like, don't get AIDS, don't get someone pregnant. It's like, now they come in blue. <laughs> and there was just a rainbow wall of all these different colored condoms, and I just would like, you know, spin in a circle and pick one, like, and make it a thing. And I, here's what I didn't know is uh, sometimes the condoms were so cheap that the coloring on the outside of the condom would wear off <laughs> and then stain uh, the interior design of my female friend I was with. I didn't, and I didn't know about it till like three days later I'd get a phone call and she'd be like, uh, Mike, why am I having a blue period? And I'm like, I don't know, Picasso. Uh, <laughs> Call a doctor, why are you calling me? <laughs> she was like, I, you told me you're a doctor, that's why I slept with <laughs> we're, both, we're both on the line for this one. No, I love my wife, I love being married. I've been married about four years now. Uh, four and a half years. Love it. I really love being married. I'm married to a teacher. I'm married to a teacher. I love being married to a teacher. There's a lot of fun things involved. A lot of, uh, yeah, she's an artist. She's, uh, she comes up with a lot of uh, creative things for us to do in the relationship. I love it all. I do have one weird, innate fear about being married to a teacher, which is like, if I piss her off enough, she's gonna make me repeat like a whole year of marriage to her. <laughs> and I'm like, baby, I'm just trying to get to 30 and die. That's all, that's all I really want here. <laughs> And she's like, all right, when's my birthday? Yeah, this is year four again. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk next year. <laughs> but she is creative. She, uh, she, she comes up with ways for, you know, to keep the, keep the bedroom life awake, you know, keep the, keep the sex life active. Uh, it's important in a relationship, it really is. Uh, so we have a tradition that we have in our apartment every day. Uh, when I get home from work and she gets home from work, uh, we spend the entire time in the apartment half naked with each other. Which essentially means that she is fully clothed and is screaming at me to put my fucking clothes back. <laughs> we like all the same movies and music. It's the only thing we don't agree on. My body. My body. We don't agree on uh, how good it looks, you know? <laughs> That's it. Sorry, I got my little cheat sheet here. Hey. Fucking 
John Bon Jovi can have a set list uh, in front of him. I feel like I'm a, I, you know, it's good for me too. <laughs> we got any Beyonce fans in the crowd? Woo! Yeah, all the ladies, gotta love them. Beyonce is amazing. Uh, I would be a drone to her queen bee, whatever the phrase is, I don't know. I think I just showed how white I really am. <laughs> <laughs> I love Beyonce. I love her. She's not only is she an amazing singer. Uh, she's a, she's a, she's not a bad actress either. Uh, but she's resilient. I love how resilient of a woman she is. Life handed her adultery and she made lemonade. Fantastic. Yeah. Album. Yeah. Fantastic. Album. Audibly, visibly, visibly. Can I just say visibly? Visibly is not a word. <laughs> Fantastic. I, as much as I love Beyonce, I honestly, like, it pains me to say this, but uh, she just had twins, and I think she's going to be, like, the worst mother of these twins. <laughs> it sounds really bad, but I, it, this is all scientific evidence. I'm only basing this theory on how she treated her first child. Uh, I'm not talking about Blue Ivy, I'm talking about Destiny's Child. <laughs> she treated those girls terribly! <laughs> Awful! How Beyonce treats her child. She's gonna kick him to the curb for a career and he's like, she's gonna get rid of these girls. I got uh NBA season just started. NBA just started again. I gotta wrap I can't, I can't help, I gotta wrap my nuggets, my Denver nuggets. I love them, they're fantastic. I love basketball, I've been getting so into it every season, every season I get more into it. I love basketball because there's all these crazy news stories that come out every year, like just in the off season, during the season, there's always, it's like a reality show, like it's great. Here's my favorite story from last year, from last season, uh, the Warriors are playing the Cavaliers in the finals, and in game five, a guy sold two floor tickets for $133,000 for two tickets to a basketball game. The NBA released a statement saying that it was the most expensive pair of tickets ever sold for an NBA game. Uh, the guy who bought the tickets for $133,000, like, his whole thing was like, oh, you know, I just want to be a part of history, like, I really love basketball, I'm a big fan of both teams, I just, I really wanted to be there. And the guy that made $133,000 off selling two tickets to the NBA also released a statement. It was like, uh, <laughs> yeah! Does anybody know how to get rid of an erection? Cause jerking off ain't working! Happy! Happy boy! Here's what I like to do to get, here's how I like to be special with all my audiences. I like to create a brand new character for each show. A brand new character. I've never repeated a character twice. And they've all done it very well. It's <laughs> <laughs> always a good fit. Uh, <laughs> this is my brand new character I've created specifically for this show, for Bull and Bush. Uh, follow along with me for a second. This is the shock jock who was fired from his radio station at a classic rock station and now can only get a job at the only other radio station in town, which is NPR. It's the only other place in town that can get a job. This is a shock jock at NPR. This is a character created especially for you people. <laughs> Coming up next on NPR, we have a frank discussion about the trumpet with Louis Armstrong, followed by a sounds of the beating of Noam Chomsky. It's coming up next on WNPR Orlando. I am your host, Boner Man. <laughs> <laughs> he, kept <laughs> he kept his name. He kept his name from the shock job. <laughs> Do you guys feel like you trust me now? Is there trust on both sides? Yeah. I trust you guys. In two seconds, I'm just diving straight into the crowd while you surf me around the bar and land me back on stage. That's how much I trust you. I'm ready to leap. You ready? No. <laughs> I do. I do trust you. You guys trust me? Is there a trust on your side? It's great. It's great. So I do. Here's how I want to. 
I want to, I want to, you know, check my trust with you guys, sir. How are you tonight? Good. You having a good night in the show? All right. All right. Can I ask you a semi-personal question? Sure. Okay. Because I, I really, I like, I like the energy I've been getting from you all night. So I feel like I, <laughs> you're someone I can trust. I hope you trust me. I hope there's an equal amount of trust here. But here's, this is the. I feel like, I feel like this is the best way to get to know someone too. You know, <laughs> meet a stranger. It's the best way to get to know somebody. So I have one question. How did you learn to masturbate? You bought a steak? <laughs> By mistake. Okay. By mistake. That's actually really common. That's a very common. Very, no, no. Especially for men. Especially for men. It's very common. You get in the shower. You get in the shower. Your mother's teaching you to be very thorough with your cleaning. You're like, I'm going to be a good boy. <laughs> And then you didn't realize, you didn't realize how dirty the inside of your penis was. And you have to get rid of it all. I get it. No, no, it's very, it's actually very common. I've heard people talking about, oh, they accidentally watched the porn and they stumbled across, and they just like, oh I'm like, whoop, you just stumbled across a guy jerking off? It's fine, it's a very common response actually, you know, to figuring it out by mistake. I feel like I have a very unique perspective on masturbation. I learned to masturbate by eavesdropping on my older sister's slumber parties. Let me break this down. If you really think about that, if you really think about that, there was a lot of fake news floating around my house that day. A lot of stuff I text, you know? It was like two weeks in middle school where I was trying to figure out how, as a boy, I'm supposed to finger myself. <laughs> Literally made no sense in my head. It's like the whole thing. I'm just in a, I'm just in a bathroom somewhere, like... Good. It didn't feel great. <laughs> it didn't feel good enough. Uh, <laughs> I remember going to a buddy too and being like, "You heard about this jerking off thing? I don't get it. I don't get it." He was like, "Dude, you don't, you don't use one finger. You use your whole hand. Like, it's literally how everybody does it." I was like, "No, no, no, man. I heard from my older sister that if you use your whole hand, that means you're a slut." <laughs> Thank you guys so much. My name is Mike Dale. Thank you, Mike. Mike Gill, closer aside tonight.